Hey, what's up, reefers? Coming at you with another weekly update of the 45 gallon cube tank. So, in my last video, you see that I added some um, new frags from my local reef club, Wamax Frag Fest. And let me just kind of point out where they are. And obviously, that big white, awesome looking tentacle thing is the elegance coral. Um, you see the skeleton is almost like a block. You can kind of see it right there. Let me swing to the other side as well. Uh, you see much better. It's almost like a chopped up block. And it, the tissue has healed nicely um, on top of the block and it's wrapping around the block skeleton. So it is healing well. It is completely healed. And um, you see, oh, right there, you see the brown stuff coming out, out of the mouth. That's actually poop. Yes, corals do poop. Um, I fed the tank pretty heavily yesterday with uh, frozen food and I made sure the elegance got some as well so I think it just kind of removing some excess waste. So that is doing well, although the location is not ideal but that is kind of like the only spot I can think of right now. Um, it's not ideal, let me get the camera back in focus. It's not ideal because it's so close to the rainbow bubble tip anatomy in the back. And it's kind of stinging the zoa right in front of it when it waves around. So you see the zoa in the front. Some of them is already closed up because being harassed by the elegance coral. And if I swing over to the right, you see that it's actually really close to the bubble tip anemone. So I'm kind of curious as well. Like if they do touch, which one would win? Would an enemy win or would the elegance coral win? Um, so I'm kind of brainstorming on places to move this guy. So that's one of the major coral I got from uh, from the Freck Fest two days ago. Actually, no, it's been a while. I went of Sunday. Today is Wednesday, so three days ago. So right back there, that is the red Manipora Capricornis I got from Cops. The Nilinch is actually interesting, and that's actually one of the reasons I got him. It's actually from the Penn, the famous Penn State tank. Uh, Penn State has a really big reef tank, and this red Capricornus has been there for a long time. And that is a frag from it. So, pretty cool, huh? And besides that, uh, a little chunk broke off, so I kind of mounted it to that big piece of reef plug that was a proxy to the overflow. Um, and it's actually a perfect size for it. It got a little crevice that, that fits the edge of the reef plug perfectly. So I'm hoping that it'll kind of grow out and start plating and it'll kind of get a nice little dimension going on. So it'll start growing here, growing here, and then this will kind of grow. So your eyes can kind of whoop, go that way. So we'll see how it plays out. Um, one thing you may notice is that you notice there's a little neon green dot right among my acans. And what that was, was actually a tiny piece of polyp floated off my kryptonite candy cane that I moved to the back to make room for the a can uh, to make room for the Manipora. A little head popped off, it was actually decently sized and it was floated to the back. I figure I'll deal with it later, but when I go home I see that it somehow landed into my a can and my a can is actually eating it right now, if you can. So before I started this video, maybe like half the polyp was still out but by now it's almost completely ingested so there it goes crazy right speaking of Acan, remember last video I was mentioning um, the site was getting touched by the Redactus um, and I figure I'll just kind of let it take its course as you can see the bottom three big polyps already gone um, below the three there was uh, maybe two baby polyp those are unfortunately gone as well i figured by the time i saw it it was a little bit too far gone to be safe so i figure i'll just kind of let them duke it out and see what happens and it looks like the redactus is kind of encroaching onto the green mandipora as well so and uh the redactus uh, they're glued onto the big rock so i cannot really move them the only choice i have is to move the outer corals but at this point i really like well, where the green monopora is and really like where the Acan lords are, so I may just kind of leave them and <laughs> cross my fingers because I feel like the Redactus is not really growing at all, so maybe that's it and those dead area will just be the buffer zone. 
So looking at my Zoa, I noticed that some of them are getting large. For example, check out those guys back there. Those used to be like standard Zoa size, but for some reason they started getting larger and larger. Same thing with these guys right here. Uh, compared to regular Zoa um, diameter, they, they got big. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, same thing with these, I believe is a safe cracker. They used to be tiny, but they're getting a little bit larger in size now. They're, so they're a little bit more healthy looking, which I'm happy about. Same thing with these guys, they're just kind of increasing in size, which I like. But yeah, just that colony. It's not a happy camper with the elegance coral so close. See how the tentacle is brushing up right up against the zoas? That's not good. But that frag is also glued on, so I may have to pop it off if this continues. So let's slide on over to the left. And we'll see that the red gonipora made a nice recovery. And the polyp is starting to extend again. And right behind that, we have the kryptonite candy cane. And the, let me see if I can swing over here. And without the green clown goby constantly pestering it, the flesh is coming back really nicely. So obviously that location is just like a temporary measure. Um, I need to find some place in my tank to move it to for its permanent home. And it's gonna be away from the front portion because this is where the green clown goby hangs out. And I figure all the corals I will have to put in the front will have to be pretty tolerant in terms of touch. I was thinking about moving the red gonipora right there. That's a great spot for it. I'll just pop it off the frag disc. But then I was like, wait a minute, the green <laughs> the green clown goby is finally gonna pester it to death too. So I, I, I struck that idea pretty quickly. Otherwise, everything else seems to be okay. Uh, got the Gorgonian actually really took off this past two weeks. It grew tall. So I guess it likes the location of water flow. Um, Bubble Dip Anatomy seems to be holding a size now. Um, I mean, this is supposed to be an anatomy tank, an anatomy clownfish tank, uh, first and foremost. So I'm okay with it getting bigger. I may have to move things around a little bit later on, but that's fine. As long as they're happy. And I'm happy that the female clown is now being hosted by the large red bubble tip, uh, rose bubble tip anatomy. Although they don't seem to get along, um, the female and the male. Although when they're sleeping, they seem fine, that they find each other. But when the light is on, the female continue to kind of push the male out of the way. Uh, so far, I've not seen any torn fin on the male yet, so I assume that it is just kind of like lover's spats, and they're just kind of, that's just what they do. But I'll keep an eye out. And speaking of keeping an eye out, I'm continuing to keep an eye out on the hippo tank to make sure it is not getting too large for my tank. So far, it's still okay. I think I can probably keep him for maybe two or three months, maybe? We'll see. We'll see if we can um, last until uh, my upgrade, which I'm, I'm seriously giving some thoughts, maybe in uh, November or December. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. But another really concerning thing is that, look at the algae. So these are all algae. Um, there's no air bubble trap in there yet, so I'm not sure if it's dino or not. But I do notice that when the light is off, the sand is clear. It's only when the light comes on that I notice uh, the algae on the sand bed. Or maybe because like I just did not pay attention when the light is off. So maybe this algae is there, except I just didn't know. So I... I have a little suspicion whether it's dino or not. And I want to look up here, there's no sign of this kind of algae, but I do see a little bit of bubble algae on the power head back here. So that is a little concerning, but I mean, if it was dino, it is okay. I beat it one time, I know what to do. Uh, thanks again to all your advice, so I'm not too worried. So, during the frag fest, I also bought two pretty small ammo crab, hoping to take care of stuff like this. Although this part I need to pluck myself because the crab couldn't get here. Um, but I, if I see bubble algae here, I assume that I may have other bubble algae in the rock work. So that's why I got two little ammo crab, but I've not seen them. So hopefully they're hard at work somewhere.
And it's interesting, I think um, the watermelon or dragon eye or eagle eye, whatever you want to call it, this soul is finally finding a spot that they like. This colony has been thriving. It's like it polyps got large and then it started spreading. It actually started spreading, which I'm really happy about. Same thing with um, the tubs blue. It's a shame that with our new lights, LED light, blue is so prominent that blue zoas isn't as sought over anymore because they don't stand out as much versus when it was back in the PC, PC light days or even T5 days. So I have two tub blue mini colony right here of frags. Rastar is also finally looking up. You, let me zoom in a little bit. See those guys? Polyp is finally getting a little bit larger. Before they were kind of tiny, but now they're getting a little bit larger. So I guess they're happy about something. And let's swing on. Well, actually, you can kind of see from here. The Yashagobi pear and the candy cane pistol shrimp, or candy stripe pistol shrimp, continues to do well. As soon as the uh, flake fruit hit the tank, when I feed the tank, these two gobies pop out. Shrimp also pops out with its head like right outside the burrow, uh, waiting for food to pass by. And the two gobies are competing really aggressively against the other fish in the tank. So I think they have adjusted to tank life really well. Although I wish that they found a, they did a burrow a little bit closer to their center so they're easier to observe. But I do kind of like that. You kind of see them in the background, you know, something is going on in the back, you kind of take a peek and hey, there they are. How cool is that? So that is, that is, that is neat too. And right here, the Space Invader Pectina, Pectina, whatever, <laughs> whatever, however you pronounce it, continues to do well, continues to inflate. Although with my rework rock work, the branch, the branching area is a little bit lower now. So now it actually got to grow reverse. It's kind of weird. Before it's kind of, the branch is kind of a little bit higher up. So the whole piece is more flat versus now it's kind of dipped down. So now I got to, got more work to do growing up. But it seems fine. It seems happy where it is. And um, the green stop polyp does not seem to be Enroaching onto the frag plug, which is interesting because I hear they're pretty aggressive. Now, one more thing. Uh, so, from the frag fest, I also got one head frog spawn, which I thought is kind of cool. I kind of shoved it in a hole uh, in the front column, and the frog spawn and the go torch are touching. I figured this may be okay because they're from the same family, and a lot of people say frog spawn, torch, you know, and hammer, they can, they can touch and they don't sting each other. So, I'm kind of trusting that advice and putting them parking them right up next to each other. So far so good. No problem so far. Um, and I will report back if I notice any territorial issue. All right, well, you know I ramble on and it's been like 13 minutes. And I mean, if you let me, I'll keep going. This is like, I can even talk about like little snails, hermit crab and stuff like that. But of course, you guys don't want to hear that. So I'll end this video right here. This has been the weekly update of the 40 ga 45 gallon cube tank. Um, my major concern is the algae on the sand beds. I suspect that it may be the dino returning. It's, I don't know. Uh, it is slowly getting a little bit heavier compared to last week's video. So I may do a light out in conjunction with uh, hydrogen peroxide dosing, which I still have a lot of. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready for you. <laughs> and I I specifically bought a black tarp last time just in case I need to do another light out so I may put that to use. I mean, I, I figure it's good to do a light out for a couple of days every month anyways, just to kind of clean the system a little. So I may do a water change this weekend and then I'll consider doing a light out depending on how the algae situation looks by then. All right, guys. Hope you guys are having a good week and hope you guys are not having an algae issue like I am. And I will see you guys next time. Laters.